What an absolutely stunning day today is. I am sitting in my backyard uh, again. I would guess it's probably about 80. But I'm in the shade and the sun's... <laughs> the sun's warm. But I'm in the shade, so that's all that really matters. Um, I've had a lot of questions really recently, actually. And like I've often said, uh, questions come in clusters. Um, but I've had a lot of people ask me to talk about Edgar Casey, um, and it's interesting because Edgar Casey was an integral part of my my personal uh, past life story, um, and I have a lot of thoughts about Edgar Casey. But um, it's it's fascinating. Let me let me do, just give you a little background on my connection to Edgar Casey. Um, and how I learned about Edgar Casey, of course. Um, back when I when I first started hearing about my past life stuff, I I was you know, just fascinated by this whole new world of, of metaphysics that I had never really delved into before. And I was diving through, and of course, I found Edgar Casey, the Sleeping Prophet. Um, that's that's the book about his life. And I, th I don't know, I think that was about Je by Jess Stern, I think. Um, but I, you know, I started reading about him, and I was fascinated by all the, the stuff about Atlantis and, and uh, ancient Egypt and uh, the past life stuff he talked about. I, f I, I did find it really interesting that he was, his, his readings are very much um, old school christian oriented in a lot of ways because they he comes from that that background that's where he comes from he is he i think he was a baptist i believe um but he comes from that old school christian background and coming from that background his filter that he saw the world through came through that filter i mean he was raised from as from a child with that background and so when i look at the at the um, the Edgar Casey readings, I look at him like I would look at any other psychic. Um, he's he's tapping into information through his own filters, and so oftentimes, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that he he that he uh, read on that was not accurate. There was a lot that it, that was, and I mean, he did over fourteen thousand readings. Um, and if you go to Virginia Beach to the Association for Research and Enlightenment. Uh, campus you can his 14,000 readings are there documented they were they were written down uh, by his assistant Gladys Davis which is a great last name Gladys Davis was uh, the person who wrote down he was she basically dictated everything he said while he was in trance and um, years go by of course and I start having my my the psychics come out of the woodwork telling me about my past life and I'm hearing this, and, I'm, and people are telling me over and over again, and I'm, I'm really in the midst of um, an existential crisis in the fact that I, I was, you know, I didn't know what I believed. I was Catholic, and, and you know, I was raised Catholic, and I had all these, all these thoughts about it. Do, do I truly believe this? And um, one day I was sitting in my, fr in my travel trailer, in my friend's backyard, interestingly enough, I forgot how, where it was, but I was in my friend's backyard, and another friend was staying in my travel trailer with me. I, I, my, it was an old Airstream travel trailer. It was really cool. Um, and I was I was down there in, in, in the at the beach in Rehoboth, and, uh, and I was reading a book, a little small paperback book called Edgar Casey on the Millennium. And as I was reading through it, I ran into this, and, I, and let me just back up. The reason I bought that book in the first place, because I was just curious what his predictions were for the millennium. I had no desire to find anything else out, and I had no thought about Edgar Casey verifying anything for me. It wasn't something I was looking for, but I was having psychics tell me about my past life, and um, this was just one of those um, circumstances that would um, <laughs> there were coincidences, right? Um, so I started reading the, uh, the book and I, I think it was in the, 
in the 30 page 36 or something in the 30s anyway and um it says john the beloved would again be named john and when i read that line it it struck me it hit me hard and i was like john the beloved would again be named john now i just had all these psychics tell me about my past life as john the beloved so i was i was really hit um by this the force of this time goes by um there's a book written about uh about me from the a psychic's perspective and i end up getting a book tour where we booked several locations around the country um and i ended up speaking in virginia beach at the association for research and enlightenment and i got there and i walked in the door and the book was there and i got to the space and i said uh um so one of the are people came to me and says well you know you know we're not going to verify that you were i said well i don't expect you to i don't verify that i am uh john the beloved returned i i don't i don't know what that is i don't know what reincarnation is i don't have the ex the things i always say on this channel um so i don't i'm not say i'm not asking for validation or verification I'm just talking about my experience and my truth. And they, they really appreciated that. So I spoke for the ARE uh, in Virginia Beach. I ended up speaking for the ARE in Houston, Texas, and in Portland, Oregon, uh, to the various ARE groups. Um, so I got real, I got real uh, kind of known for a while there within the ARE Edgar Casey crowd. And... Um, it was it was it was really excellent. It was excellent. But um, Edgar Casey himself. This is a man who who during a during that time. Um, you know, this is pri it started prior to World War II, and he uh, he was having these experiences where he would he would lay down in his study and go into a, a trance state and just start talking. And the people started coming and bringing him questions. And a lot of times they were health related. He did, like I said, he did over 14,000 readings and the majority of them are medical or health, health related. Um, the ones that have Atlantis and all of the other stuff are very few and far between. Um, but this was a time when, when you know, psychics and seers and all that stuff were not as, as mainstream as they are today. So this is a time when he was really putting himself out there. He's being very, very brave um, to, to put himself out there that way. People started coming from all over the world to, to see him, and, and uh, he made predictions about World War II and troop movements and things like that that came true. Um, but he also had a lot that didn't come true. Um, so... I believe he was tapping into the Akashic Records, is which is what he said. And I believe he was bringing down information. But I believe, as, as all psychics, myself included, I'm sure, that we come through our own filters. We come through our, our, own, our own process of thought. To be here in this physical world, you are going through the process. Uh, and you are, you are having your own filters. And you, are, you yourself are having your own filters. So Edgar, that's why when you look at Edgar Casey's stuff, there's a lot of it that's used, that's spoken in archaic speech, like biblical archaic speech. And that's because of his background. That's because of his, his, his upbringing. It's not because that's the way spirit talks. It's the way spirit talks to him. It's the way spirit expresses to him. And... And I don't, and spirit's a weird weird term. I don't like using it as much as as most people do, but I would say it's the source talks to him. I because you add the word spirit and you start creating hierarchies that I don't think are there. I would say I would call it the source. I would call it God. Um, and Edgar Casey was very well adept at just laying it down. He was also a selfless man. Um, during World War II, when there was all kinds of medical readings that needed to be done, uh, he was told by the Akashic Records that he should limit himself to one or two a day. 
and he was doing sometimes eight and ten a day um, because he, he felt he needed to be of service and so being of service meant that it wore him down and then he ended up you know it really did wear him down he did not you know last too long after that um, but the point the point of the Edgar Casey story is this Edgar Casey was an amazing reader of the Akashic records he was reading his own he was reading through his own filter he's just as fallible as anybody else and right now we have a lot of people who treat Edgar Casey as if Edgar Casey is a religion as if he's infallible like the like that some people think the Bible is infallible but the reality of it is he was just as flawed as everyone else is and in being just as flawed as everyone else is you know he also sometimes his filter sometimes got in the way of, of truth you know, he was very good he was exceptionally good he was probably the best that there's ever been but you have to realize that anything, anyone, psychics otherwise, are, are all fallible. They all come from that space of bringing information through a filter. And that filter itself can affect the information, can affect how it's delivered, can affect the content of, of, of the delivery. Right? It wasn't until later... When he started having the uh, the Atlantis and all that stuff, um, that he was okay with taking that information in, because early on he wasn't getting that stuff, and then he started getting that information, and he had to, in his waking state, justify it with his beliefs. He talks about that in a lot of the writings and or a lot of the interviews and stuff about how he had to, how he had to come out, read the thing, and then go, okay, how does this fit with what I believe, and so. He was dealing with his own filters as well. And as the longer he did readings, the less his filters were. And that's not to say he got perfectly clear, because no one ever gets perfectly clear while you're here. To be here means you're not clear, right? <laughs> you're not 100% clear, because the experiences you are having here are giving you the filter. And so to be in this physical place means you are not clear fully clear on on what it's all about you know Alfie um, <laughs> what's it all about <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to hop on and just talk about Edgar Casey because I do get asked about Edgar Casey quite a lot and um, Edgar Casey was an amazing amazing reader it was hugely impactful in my life when I read that one line John the beloved will again be named John right at the time when everyone was telling me that. Um, so, what's my thought on Edgar Casey? Amazing reader, amazing story, just as flawed as everyone else, uh, brought things through his own filter. Um, don't, I would say, don't take any reader, any psychic, you know, 100% at their word. You are the best, you are the best psychic in your life. You are the best filter for your experience, right? So, and that filter can be used with discernment. So you hear something from someone, you think, is this true for me? Or is this true for just them? Or is this a universal truth or a common truth? And if you can take that idea and you can, can look at it from the aspect of, you know, I am also gifted, rather than saying, I need to look outside of myself, for someone who can who can be so so gifted you're just as gifted as he is everyone's just as gifted as, as he is the only difference is he knew he could and he knew he would he was stepping into, into his role in divinity because he himself was saying I am getting information I am reading something great I am bringing something forward I am helping and so uh, it's a matter of you not looking for a path to answers but being the path to answers step into the role you have this you got this you're going to get the information you need follow your heart get out of your head it's not a thinking it's a feeling you guys have a great day and i'll talk to you soon see ya bye thank you my friends for watching this video if you enjoyed it please make sure that you've subscribed and you like it you share it but also comment below it let's get this community talking about these topics and and spreading this information out 
far and wide so we can change the world for the better. Thank you.